the teams here on the ground, obviously, uh, as mentioned, are um, with one eye on the activities aboard the space station is also following along with the countdown activities in Baikonur among the three crew members headed to the International Space Station is Barry Wilmore, who has flown previously in space on a shuttle flight, an 11-day mission, the STS-129 mission of Atlantis. He uh, is uh, part of the three-member crew that's headed to the station this afternoon and evening um, and during the crew's traditional trip to Red Square before the three actually left Moscow for Baikonur. We actually had a few minutes to talk to uh, Barry about his impending trip to space and asked him what it has been like to train for this journey to the International Space Station. Oh, the experience, it's been, a, it's been a long training flow, two and a half years, and the experience actually has been wonderful because the main thing I think, uh, I guess the most, the, the most exciting, the most beneficial part for me personally is there are many individuals around the globe that put their passion into human spaceflight. And when you have an exam like we had the last two days, uh, we've also had tests and whatnot in the other locations in, in, at JAXA in Japan and at uh, um, in, uh, um, Cologne there with uh, the European Space Agency. And when you have exams and tests, evaluation of how you've done, and you come through and you see the look on those instructors' faces that they've done their part, they've gotten the crew ready, and that's that's a wonderful benefit for us to see that and experience that and see see that in their faces. So that, that's a special time. The day of launch is, is quite a long day. Um, there's much preparation, physical preparation for launch, getting the, the suit on, there's pressure checks involved, there's, there's uh, reporting to the commission that's going to the vehicle, going to the rocket, there's laying on your back for two and a half hours in a somewhat uncomfortable position. It's just, you know, it's just the way it is for, for, the, for all space vehicles, including this one. And then of course the launch, Six hours after launch, we finally rendezvous to station. So that's about, you know, all together before you actually, from the time you get up until you go to bed, that's almost a full 24 hours. So it's, a, it's quite taxing, obviously, physically, but think of the environment you're in, and uh, it's well worth it. The station exists for the benefit of mankind. And everything we do, the systems that we work on, the systems that have been designed going back, you know, 20 years ago, the, the inception of the station, and the systems we work on now are part of the program. As we go forward, I know at my house, I have uh, an on-demand water heater that came from NASA technology, and we have on-demand water heaters on station. So, you know, it's beneficial to mankind now, and certainly we're looking to the future. Much of our science is involved about will we go beyond beyond low Earth orbit, and when we go beyond low Earth orbit, there's a lot we need to know and understand. So much of our science is physical science uh, for the, the individuals themselves and how we cope with long duration weightlessness, and also the systems that will take us to those far destinations. So it's, it's big picture, it's, it's benefiting here on Earth and benefiting for the future exploration as well.